Hi there, Steve Stein here again from LessonFace.com. Um, I'm glad to be doing another installment of a video for you for Guitar World. What I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be explaining a little bit more about how to solo melodically um, and kind of break you out of the rut of always moving up and down. We'll call this vertically, moving up and down all the time when you solo. A lot of people when they play, you know, they move around like that and it's great. We, we definitely need to do that. But a lot of times what's lacking with a lot of people's playing is that they don't really think about melody. So let's just concentrate on that for a second and I'm going to play a little bit and then um, I want you to try and do the same thing. So what we're going to be doing here is I'm going to play over a chord progression that's going to be going from G to E minor to D. Okay, and then it continues on from there. So I'm going to be in the key of G major. So the scale I'm going to be using here is the G major scale. And I'm going to be playing this as 3-5-7 on the 6th and 5th strings. And notice I'm using my first finger, my middle finger, and my pinky. And then I'm going to move to 4-5-7 on the next two strings, using my first, my middle, and my pinky again. And then I'm going to move to 5, 7, 8 on the second and first strings. Now the truth is, I'm not really going to be using that shape though. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and see the notes of the G major scale um, on one string. And of course, the better you know your scales on your fretboard, needless to say, the, the more freedom you have to move around and explore and make things more creative for yourself. So what I want to talk about today is trying to see that scale on one string. So if I think about the notes in a G major scale, the notes would be G, that would be my third fret here, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and then G over again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my second string and I'm going to try and utilize that primarily for my melody. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is try and figure out all the notes on my second string that I need. So I have B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. And of course we can keep going. A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and then finally G. Okay, so the point here is, is that I'm going to try and follow these chords around in what I refer to as chord chasing. So if I don't know all my theory and I don't know all the notes on my guitar, and certainly those are, are challenges I should be trying to achieve um, as I continue playing. But let's say I didn't know all that, but I do know how to play some bar chords and I know how to play some open chords. So the first thing I start thinking about is where can I see a G chord on this guitar? Where can I see an E minor chord? Where can I see a D chord? And I'm going to chase those chords around, trying to play more melodically. Again, what a lot of players do is when they play, they're not, they're not really thinking about the chords, they're just moving around inside a shape. What we want to do is start adding in some thought process here. So, I'm thinking about a G. I've got a G major bar chord sitting here at the third fret. Okay, and I've got a, a cage system, and if you don't know the cage system, just follow along with me, but I can go up here to the seventh and eighth frets, and I can make a D shape right here. So I've got seven, eight, seven. And those notes are G as well, and I could find Gs all over. I got a fifth string bar chord G. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and visualize those across the fretboard. So when the G chord is playing, I've got my scale that I just went through, my B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, all those notes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and target a note from the G chord. So if I'm looking at this G chord right here at the third fret, I've got that note right there, which happens to be a D, which is part of the G chord. If I'm looking at this G chord right here, the D shape, that's the eighth fret of the second string. Okay, and that note's a G, obviously part of the G chord. I could go up to the fifth string bar chord and play that. That note is B, that's also part of the G chord. And again, if you don't know all that theory, don't worry about it at this point. I just want to show you how to play visually, okay? So I know I've got this note, this note, and this note that I could try and emphasize over the G chord. Then the E minor comes up, and I've got to do the same thing. Okay, well, what can I play over an E minor chord? Well, I know I've got an open string, because that's part of the E minor chord here, right? That's a B, that's fine. Um, I might have an E minor right here, which is my fifth string bar chord which again is the eighth fret right here. It's a G and that fits in the E minor chord as well. So if you kind of see what I'm doing is I'm trying to see multiple things at the same time. I'm seeing my G major scale maybe across the guitar vertically like this, but then I'm also seeing the G major scale across any string, but in this, in this particular case, I'm using the second string running this way. 
okay? And now what I'm doing is I'm plotting points across the guitar of places I can go for a G chord, places I can go for an E minor chord, and of course now places I can go for a D chord. I got a D chord sitting right here, which gives me the seventh fret of the second string. I've got a D chord sitting right here in the open position, which is gonna give me that third fret of the uh, second string. So, and again, just anywhere where you can see those. So let me kind of show you a real basic movement here using a jam track of trying to follow those chords around. I'm not trying to play real fancy, I'm just trying to move from point A to point B. So again, remember I've got G, E minor, D, okay? So watch this. So let's just look at that once. So what I'm doing here is I'm starting off on this note right here, which is a G, which fits fine over the G chord, obviously. And then I'm hitting it again for the E minor, because it fits over an E minor chord. You can see that right there, E minor bar chord. And then I'm moving to a D, okay? Or I shouldn't say D, I'm moving over to the D bar chord shape, okay? And I'm moving down from my G to my F sharp, which is part of that chord. So instead of just going two, three, four, two, three, four, which would be just fine. I'm just adding in some motion to make it sound more interesting. So I went like this, I went from eight. Okay, now again, it's not very exciting, but what you will notice is that it's adding melody. The thing that we as guitar players have to remember is it isn't all about how fast we can move um, and how many different notes we can play and those sorts of things. Those are all great tools and, and obviously it'd be awesome if we could do all of these things. Um, we want to use those in our arsenal of ideas. But forgetting and, and sort of um, you know disregarding melody all the way around is not a good idea. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to start building an idea for you. So just over the same thing over and over and over. So we've had the beginning here. So once again, I'm going to do it for you. So I'm starting off in the eighth fret. Okay, so let's look at that. Now what I did was I took that same first melody, but then I dropped down here to the third fret of the second string, which is part of the D chord. That note is in fact D, so it fits perfectly. Then I went back up to the eighth fret, and I know that wor note works over G because of that chord right there. And then what I did was I went up to here. That's a B. Now remember, we could play B open because it was part of the E minor chord. So I'm just using that octave right here. Okay, and then I could drop back down over the D chord well, I could have gone a number of different places. Okay, I just went to the seventh fret again because that's where I went last time. So now what I could do is in between that, I could continue building. I don't have to continue trying to add, again, as many things as possible, but I could add around it. If I was able to see the, the uh, G major scale, the shapes of, of the G major scale on my guitar, I could start adding in different things. So I might play this. And maybe I go here to the uh, third string seventh fret. And then maybe I come up. See how I can start adding in other strings around it? I'm not just going. I'm not just moving like that. I'm thinking about. See, there's my D. So the more I know about my fretboard, the more I can visualize the scale, the chord shapes, and then think about what notes I'm looking for. And again, I'm not thinking in theory, you know, root third, fifth right now. What I'm doing is I'm thinking visually. So if you're not real knowledgeable on your theory, this is a great technique to use, is how many different places can you see an E minor chord or a G major chord? Where can you see those on your fretboard? Okay, and then trying to follow those chords around as we go, looking for the shapes of each chord. 
So go ahead and practice that a little bit. And again, if you have any questions, you can contact me at lesson, uh, lessonface.com. And, you know, we can keep exploring this further. So take care and I'll see you soon.